Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Indoor Recess. I'm joined by uh, Kevin McGree, I'm the hockey reporter here at the Toronto Star. How's it going, Kevin? Doing well, Justin. How are you? Not bad, you know. Uh, enjoy. I really enjoyed last night's game. It was uh, between the Leafs and the Jets. Uh, that goal by Austin Matthews was absolutely filthy. Can you imagine how good Austin Matthews would be if he was healthy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he scored three. We know he's been he's had this sore wrist for whatever two to three weeks. He sat out a couple of games. He came back. He's not shooting really. He still has three goals. I mean that that <laughs> move. Games, yeah, and that move was it was just nasty, right? I mean, yeah, he right. freezes the goalie, looking like it's forehand, and he quickly goes backhand and and and. Um, Leafs had tried to, I think they had five or six breakaways. They went backhand every time, and Matthews was the only one that yeah. beat Connor Hellebuck on the backhand. I, I, I'm never quite sure why they all like to go to the backhand like that. The forehand is a stronger shot. Right. But um, that's how things end up. I guess the goalies have a little something to say to force them to, uh, to that. Yeah. I mean, like, that was like the only time Hellebuck like, bought it, right? Like, he, he, yeah. He really, but uh, it was a uh, great goal, great finish. Um, it probably calmed a lot of uh, Leafs fans' nerves a little bit about um, the recent losing streak. Um, the Jets, I mean, were very surprisingly uh, a tough opponent for the Leafs. Um, it wouldn't, not so surprisingly. Yeah. That's a very, very good team. Their top two lines, the, the right. two teams match up really well. They're both strong. Their, their first two centers are, are terrific. They've got great scoring wingers. Let, let's not forget that, that Nick Ehlers was picked one spot after – after William Milan, the yeah. Leafs, they didn't know which one to take. They, they knew they were both kind of the same. Pierre-Luc Dubois, just a couple of spots after Austin Matthews. Like, they're they're really, really similar teams, and you could argue that that Winnipeg's got better goaltending. Yeah, no, yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. So, um, uh, speaking about that, uh, those two top two teams, the Leafs are still, in this halfway point of the season, the Leafs are still in first place of, of the North, um, in the league, uh, I think, uh, oh, just over Carolina. Um, so uh, what's your assessment of the Leafs so far this uh, season? Are they really the juggernaut that, you know, some people are saying they are? Are they the Stanley Cup favorites at, the, at this point? Uh, what's, well, what's they're, the they're the juggernaut uh, of the first half of the season, that's for sure. But in the North, there seems to be a different juggernaut every week. Some teams go... <laughs> Some team goes 3-0, and 4-0, and, and we all buy into it. Um, they've accomplished what they had hoped to accomplish, and that's about as much as you can say about them. What they wanted to do was come out and win. They didn't want to go through any lulls. You could argue the last three games before this one was their only lull of the season. They responded to losses with victories. They responded to victories with victories. Um, they've established a sort of playing style and philosophy that will do them well if they stick to it. Like if they get themselves caught in, in track meets, just trying to run up the score, that's usually when they get themselves into trouble. But when they play a committed way to protecting the goalie and building from there on out, and that's what they wanted to do. And that's what they have done. So yeah, they've established themselves as the Kings in the North, as we say, um, that will carry them into the playoffs. But once you get to the playoffs, it's the Toronto Maple Leafs and they haven't done anything in the playoffs. So they will have those, those burdens to bear, those ghosts in their, in their closet, like however you want to phrase it, they'll, they'll have that to overcome. And unless and until they win around, no one is going to take them seriously as standing up contenders. Yeah, like, do you think, like some people have been saying, like it's just because the North is just like a little weak. You know, this, there's Ottawa. I mean, even though that <laughs> the Leafs have lost to Ottawa, and, um, you well, know, the way, I look at, the way I look at the North, so there's no real true elite team in the North. Okay, but there Ottawa is the only weak one. So right. what you have are six teams in the middle and skewing towards the top end because let's face it, Toronto and. Toronto, Edmonton, and Winnipeg are fairly good teams. They might not be first in their presumptive divisions, but they'd be second or third. So you have a lot of top-end teams, top half but not top tier, playing against each other. So I think it's a tough division. I think it's a very – I think it's a division that will 
prepare them very, very well for the playoffs. Like a team like Winnipeg is built for the playoffs. They're big, they're tough, they're a central division team. They're a, a rough and ready to go team. Yeah. Anybody to hit in this division because nobody else in the division wants to hit. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, like that, that trade really worked out very well uh, up here in the Dubois trade for, for the Jets. Um, so speaking, of, so back to the Leafs, uh, I just want to ask you, like, who do you think has been the most surprising uh, uh, player this season for the Leafs? And who do you think has been the most disappointing? Um, we can do like a bit of a, like a little like report card assessment. Well, there's, I mean, if I'm talking about surprises, I'm talking about guys down the lineup, like Michael Hutchinson, who saw this? We saw yeah. what he did with the Leafs last year, and he comes in and he wins four or five games. So yeah. that's a nice surprise. And you need surprises like that sprinkled through the lineup because we know what Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner can do. John Tavares just puts his head down and puts in a workman-like sort of elite game every time. William Nylander is exactly William Nylander. Brilliant some nights. Where did he go other nights? But still, still worth it. And he was brilliant last night. He was, he was terrific last night. But it's the other guys like Zach Hyman is really, really taken another step. I've always liked him as a player, but this year he's he's really, really gone up a gone up a level. Uh, Joe Thornton, I wasn't quite sure what to. I, I have images of Patrick Marlowe jumping around in my head when yeah. I saw him, and Joe has been so much more than that. Right. Um, so uh, T.J. Brody is a, is kind of a fun one to watch because you specifically have to watch him. Because he's never going to do anything like to, to, to drop your jaw. He is just right. going to get the puck off the other guy. Yeah. And he'll do whatever he can to do it. But it's all like it's not – it's in his end, and he'll turn the play around. He'll pass to Morgan Riley. He'll pass to Mitch Marner. He'll pass it to uh, – and, you know, the, but it all started because of something T.J. Brody did in his own end. So he's, he's one you really got to – if you got to like defense to even notice what he's doing. On the downside, um, it's hard to, to criticize these guys because they're in first place. Yeah, but really, it's the Leafs, you know? <laughs> There's always things. It's the Leafs. I mean, Pierre Engvall <laughs> was in the doghouse to start, right. uh, and he's worked his way out of it. Jimmy VC was really well regarded to start, and he's worked his way down the lineup. Mm. But it's, can you really be angry at – can you really be upset at Jimmy VC, who's earning the NHL minimum trying to put his game together? Like – yeah. I don't I don't see I don't see a lot of reasons to worry about this team. They, yeah. their, their defense looks like it's a, a solidly built a defense as they've they've had in the last five or six years. Um, it gets leaky at times like Justin Hall and Travis Dermott have both had sort of questionable weeks, which is why goals have gone in the other end. Mm -hmm. uh, Morgan Riley, I think I might have expected more out of Morgan Riley. I, I expected him to be in the Norris conversation, being completely healthy, having mm -hmm. TJ Brody on his right side and playing with the big guys. He's putting up points, but I don't think he's really stood out in a Norris conversation kind of way. So if there's one thing that I was looking forward to seeing, uh, I'm, I'm glad he's healthy. I'm glad he's playing well, but he's not playing at the elite level I expected him to. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, the de defense for the Leafs have definitely, uh, definitely been a huge improvement. Not, I would say huge, but definitely a noticeable improvement uh, for past uh, last season. So, so are, are the Leafs the Stanley Cup uh, favorites, or sh are we all just like in the blinders, like tunnel vision? Well, there's <laughs> certain blinders on. I mean, this season is really all like because you're only playing the division. I think the Leafs should be the favorites to come out of the division. Yeah. As, as the champions at the end of it. But like Winnipeg and Edmonton have a fair bit of time on their hands to get themselves together. And it looks like both have. And even Montreal looks like it's straightened itself out. So I, there's going to be a dogfight between Montreal and Calgary, I think, for the last playoff spot. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a dogfight between um, Winnipeg and Edmonton to, to get the second to get the second seed because I, the Leafs look like they might just kind of run away with it. And the Leafs might have the easier path. And in the playoffs, the team that got the easiest path is not necessarily as uh, hardened to win. Right. To the playoffs. And I, especially. Uh, uh, I, I think, I think they're, they're legitimate 
they're legitimate, but they're not. I don't think they're the favorites. I still think Tampa is so well put together. Look what they're doing, and they don't have Nikita Kucherov. Um, <laughs> he he can't, he'll come back and just in time for the playoffs. It will be like a May miracle. Um, so there 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 are um, there are good teams in the other divisions that are more hardened and more ready to take on the rigors of the playoffs. And the Leafs could find themselves, whatever team wins the North, could find themselves playing in a strange location if quarantine restrictions aren't raised. Um, they might, the Leafs might have to play in Buffalo, for example, uh, uh, if, if that comes to the, that's where their home games will be. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, because with the States kind of just, I can't see a bubble situation happening again with the NHL, especially for the playoffs. So, well, Gary Bettman yeah. said uh, they're open to all ideas to get the playoffs done, and who knows yeah. what what sort of fun stuff awaits us with this the yeah. coronavirus and its merit, various variants and and things yeah. like that. We, we just don't know. So the NHL is open to that idea, but that's certainly not their that's not Plan A. Their Plan A is for teams to play in their buildings. Okay, interesting. So, uh, anything you want to add before we uh, we sign off? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I just don't think you can really take a, enough of Austin Matthews and what he's doing this year. It is, it is truly. If you're a Leaf fan and you're watching these guys, I hope you're drinking it all up. I know there's a bunch <laughs> of fans out there that want these guys to hit more. And I just don't understand why they want them to hit more. I, this, this market is kind of weird. They like their lunch bucket players more than their skilled players. And right now the Leafs have four or five guys that are just a pleasure to watch, handle the puck and commit to, to winning and playing the right way. And, and uh, I, I just hope people just drink it up and enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. We worry about the playoffs in the playoffs. But, yeah. Yeah. But this is a team that might actually win the President's Trophy. They might have finished first overall. They've never won anything like it. I mean, yeah. it's not the Stanley Cup, but winning a league is winning a league. It, it might matter. Yeah, and definitely, you know, bodes well for, you know, next season and uh, the development of these young, this young core. Uh, and I don't think we talk about Mitch Marner enough, too. It's like that guy's <laughs> an assist machine. Like it's, it's like, And he's uh, so well – aware defensively he could yeah. probably, he should probably win the selkie this year yes okay so hard hard for matthews and selkie for <laughs> well matthews has, has some tough competition there like yeah, yeah, yeah. Kane is really uh, yeah, yeah. when you talk about the heart it's most valuable to his team and you know the oilers without mcdavid still have dry saddle the least without matthews still have marner the blackhawks without kane i don't know <laughs> yeah, they're without Taves, but without Kane, uh, how do they pull this off? Because they're having a remarkable season. Yeah, fair enough. All right, as always, Kevin. Thank All you. right, thanks a lot, and stay safe, and uh, see you next time.